Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. A Time for True Show is sponsored by the office of Dr. Bernard Fiakoff, a periodontal, dental implant and laser specialist in New York City for over 40 years. Dr. Fiakoff was honored by the International College of Dentists and Pierre Fauchard and received the Presidential Lifetime Humanitarian Honor from the White House. Call us at 718-229-3838. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything is falling apart yeah. You try to do your best But only God knows that you've given everything you've got But the world takes you down You just keep moving on at your feet. Welcome to a Time for True show. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkoff, and it's a pleasure to have you back with us again. Amazingly enough, it's already February 2024. This year is just zipping by at rapid velocity. And tonight we're going to cover something that is really so prevalent among so many people and so many of my patients in my practice. And I want to dedicate a show because many times it goes undiagnosed. The person ends up having root canals that they don't need or they have a brand new beautiful porcelain crown and it cracks and they don't understand why it's cracked or they start developing some unusual pain or they just don't understand it because now all of a sudden every day when they wake up in the morning they complain of this soreness it goes in the ear goes to the side of the head goes down in here around the jawline. And sometimes it occurs with people who have lost a lot of teeth. And so their bite has become unstable. And when the bite becomes unstable, the muscles can't reach an equilibrium. The jaw shifts. And they can start developing habits. And these habits can cause pain, discomfort, So we're going to talk about this on the show. It's something that's called bruxism. And bruxism, grinding of the teeth. Buddha, if you will, let's put up the first image on the screen. And we'll show you the results of this bruxism. This grinding of the teeth. Almost as if you were taking sandpaper to the teeth. And what's happening is the teeth are grinding and actually creating like sandpaper abrading each other and you can see the severe wear that occurs in the patient's mouth there you see the lateral incisor which hasn't been involved in this bruxism and the canine tooth next to it but then you see the incisor teeth the lateral incisor to the left the eye tooth to the left the lower incisors And you see the severe wear occurring in this person's mouth. So this is called bruxism. And let's go to the next slide, Buddha. So what is bruxism? Well, it's an oral, intraoral condition where the person grinds and clenches or gnashes their teeth. And it can occur when you're awake as well as when you're sleeping. And that's what they suffer from. Now, just to, diag you know, to differentiate the diagnosis, TMJ disorder is actually something different. TMJ means temporal mandibular joint disorder. Those are these joints here next to your ears. If you open and close, 
you'll feel your joints. And those are called the temporal mandibular joint, the temporal bone. This is the temporal bone of the skull. And the mandibular bone of the lower jaw form a joint called the TMJ joint. And this can have a disorder. And in this disorder, which occurs in many times in patients who are missing teeth, shifted teeth, teeth out of position, along with bruxism, and it's an improper functioning of the muscles and joints that attach the jaw to the skull. And it involves pain and can also involve bruxism. Let's go to the next slide. Now, a very uh, important thing to realize is that <clears throat> many times people complain of head, neck, and shoulder pain. And they're wondering why they have it. Uh, maybe they're seeing a chiropractor, or maybe they just started taking Motrin, or aspirin, or Tylenol, or anti-inflammatories for their joints, but they don't realize that what they're doing is that they're bruxing their teeth. And this causes a wear of their teeth, of their restorations, which are their fillings, their caps, their veneers. And what happens is they can break. So they lead to fractures. And so it's very recommended and suggested that those patients and people who have caps and crowns, who have porcelain bridges or regular bridges, who have implant crowns, definitely with veneers, uh, that they need to control this unconscious habit of bruxing and clenching. Now, what is the difference between bruxing and clenching? Bruxing is that gnashing and grinding back and forth, whereas clenching is just gritting your teeth. Actually, clenching is much more uh, deleterious, much more destructive, because the forces are so strong and they're pressed into the uh, teeth can cause tremendous fracturing and root canal problems for the person. So bruxing and clenching, both are called parafunctional habits. They're habits that occur outside the normal function of chewing, of swallowing, of smiling. Uh, these are parafunctional. They're not normal habits. Let's go to the next slide. And so uh, let's take a look here. And we can compare, and on the healthy side, we see the normal curve of the smile line, the teeth, normal length and width. And then on the left side, we see what's called attrition. Attrition is the severe wear that occurs of the teeth. You also can have something called abfraction. Your dentist may have told you you have abfraction. You need fillings at the gum line. Well, those are tiny fractures that have occurred that the dentist can still repair. It's important, it's important to get them early so they don't progress and you crack the entire tooth, needing a crown, or at worst, having the tooth be so hopeless that you have to extract it and then do an implant. So you want to Make sure that you treat this bruxism. Uh, it can also lead to gum recession because as you affect the bone around the teeth from the severe forces, the bone can be affected. And as the bone becomes affected, then the gum can actually recede. And this is a clinical finding that we see, as you see on the effects of bruxism on the left side of the screen. Let's go to the next slide. Now, Let's take a look, because we're looking at bruxism. And so what can you do? Uh, what are the factors that affect you getting this habit? Well, one is you have to be careful with trauma. So if you uh, are young, watching the show, and you're an athlete, I would encourage you to come see us, come see your dentist, and we would make you a, a bike guard. Your bike guard wouldn't be for bruxism, would be to protect your teeth from the trauma of the football, the basketball, the boxing, the wrestling. Uh, and it's very interesting because many studies have been done, and not only does it protect the athlete's teeth, but it seems to give the athlete a little more strength because the jaw stabilized 
and I think the body realizes it's protected, and so it is able to expert all its effort and exertion into the sporting activity. So for an athlete to avoid this trauma, it's very important to have a night guard. For those of you who have already had a trauma, <clears throat> maybe through a car accident, or maybe you fell down the steps, bicycle accident, or you, you know, have a little, little baby or a little boy, little girl, and they hit you on the head playing and traumatize the teeth. Sometimes you don't realize you've had anything wrong, but then it comes out as time goes on and you can start bruxing. Now, the other factor is stress. And probably the people out there are laughing and say, well, what am I going to do about that, Dr. Fialkoff? You know, our life is very stressful in today's world. That's very true. But it's important to realize that the more stress you have, the more energy you need to release before you go to sleep and even during the day. The reason I say that is because if somehow you don't release those energies to exercise, to some type of enjoyable activity or to some productive physical activity or even just plain walking, then that energy needs to be dissipated in some other way and your body will try to dissipate it and it could dissipate it as clenching, grinding, and bruxing of your teeth. Uh, another thing that's important to realize is excess caffeine, not vaffine, but vaffine is the newest of caffeines. I'm just joking. And the excess caffeine is another problem. Why? Because the caffeine hypes you up and gets you sometimes actually stressed out. And even though you have energy, the caffeine has raised you to a very high level. And now you start bruxing. Other factors associated with bruxism are alcohol, smoking, how, how is that? Why is that? Well, if you look at it, bruxism is a stress release habit. And so someone who's going to tend to have problems in their life, unhappy about an aspect of it, uh, or have some unconfrontable or non-confrontable situation, some worry that's bothering them, they're probably going to smoke. They're going to, probably going to drink alcohol. And these factors. Number one, they decrease your B vitamins, especially B1, and they uh, affect nicotine levels, which cause a clamping of the blood vessels, cause inflammation of the gums, and those factors cause more stress and more bruxing. Now, along with that, there are certain medications which are serotonin, selective serotonin uptake, medications. And these medications which are prescribed, unfortunately, bruxism is also related to those situations. And so those type of patients should definitely have a bite guard because they'll have a propensity to have bruxism being on these serotonin medications. Let's go to the next slide, please, Buddha. So there you go. There's an example it's not the only example, but this is a simple example of a night guard. And uh, you see it's clear and it goes over the upper teeth. I favor doing that for the upper teeth in my practice. Some of the doctors like the lower, <clears throat> the lower arch or the lower arch probably is more used for the temporal mandibular, mandibular joint syndromes. Whereas with Bruxin clenching, we tend to use more of the upper bite guard or what's called a night guard because it tends to be worn at night although it can be worn anytime during the day. Let's go to the next slide, Buddha. Now, how is this night guard made? Well, in our office, we use a special digital scanning machine. We don't use the old-fashioned way anymore. We don't put molds in your mouth because a lot of the patients hated that because they gagged. Uh, they couldn't tolerate it. Uh, and then the impression did come out, so it had to be repeated. We don't do that in the office. We have what you see on the screen. And this uh, digital impressioning machine with the wand that you see the assistant hygienist using. And what she's doing is she's taking a digital impression. 
So with that light, <clears throat> which has a certain wavelength, we take a digital impression of the teeth on the lower, of the teeth on the upper. We take the relationship of the upper jaw to the lower jaw, so we get a bite relationship. And there on the image on the screen, you can see how the jaw is being actually manufactured on that computer screen. And this is going to actually be sent now to the laboratory. Let's go to the next slide, engineer. Here you go. Here's a close-up of what I was explaining to you. There you see the upper and lower jaw on the left side of the screen, a close-up on the left side. And on the right side, there you see the scanned image of one of the arches. And we'll scan the upper arch. We'll scan the lower arch. She's done scanning, so she's put the wand away. And this will communicate electronically with our laboratory, who will then fabricate a model from this. Again, there's no impressioning. There's no goop in your mouth anymore. Much more comfortable. Let's go to the next image, please. And here you see what the laboratory fabricates. And they make a stone model from that digital impression. There you see it in yellow. And then you see over the teeth, the white or clear, what's called acrylic, which is a plastic. And that is what you use over your teeth at nighttime. That's what's called the bite guard or the night guard. And so what it does, it protects your teeth so you don't crack your teeth, so you don't wear your teeth, and so that those deleterious habits are dissipated. It also tends to harmonize the bite so that you don't wake up with such pain in your jaw joints. I'll give you a story of a recent patient that I had. She came into me with severe pain, had seen her dentist, didn't know what to do. And so I looked at her and uh, examined. She had severe pain on all three upper left molars. We took x-rays. I explained to her, you're grinding your teeth. She wanted me to take out two molars. I said, no. And she said, no, I want you to take out both my molars. I said, no. And I said, you're grinding your teeth. All we need to do is let's make you a bite guard. Your gums will inflame. We're going to give you a little bit of a cleaning. But then we're going to make you an impression, which you saw how we make it with a digital impression. We made her the bite guard. Now, during the week that it was gone, she was having pain, so I gave her some uh, anti-inflammatory medication. If you couldn't find another doctor, you needed some help, you could get a Motrin and an Advil. <clears throat> They're anti-inflammatory, and they help you in a short run. And so we helped her through with this. We gave her the night guard, and she was still insisting on having a root canal or having an extraction. And I said to her, you don't need a root canal. You don't need an extraction. You're grinding your teeth. That causes severe pain. Here's your night guard. Start wearing it. Well, lo and behold, she came back two weeks later, walked in the office, smiling. I didn't really even have to ask her anything, but she said to me, you know, you were right. I'm so happy I didn't take out my teeth or do the root canal. Uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I was so angry with you. I was in such severe pain. I didn't know what to do with myself. And I just wanted something done to get rid of the pain. Now, if she had the teeth removed, it may have alleviated the symptoms, but she would have lost two teeth that she didn't lose, need to lose. She was totally comfortable now. And there's also a possibility that even though she had those teeth removed, that because she was crunching and bruxing and she didn't have an appliance, now she would have transferred the pain to the next molar and the premolar. And then she'd be back again complaining and wanting a root canal. So for those of you out there who've experienced this, now you know that you can call us and make a bite guard. Let's go to the next slide. Now, we talked about, aside from making the bite guard, some factors are important to realize, and those are that there are two mediators in the body that are naturally occurring, which is called serotonin and dopamine. And when the body 
is actually experiencing pleasurable symptoms, pleasurable experiences like a wedding, like doing really well in kind of sporting activity, your favorite team wins, you're out with your, you know, your spouse or your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or you're dancing, you're having a good time. Well, the body releases these happy mediators. They're normal in the body and they're released by positive pro-survival activities. Uh, unfortunately, stress tends to reduce them. And so as they reduce, the person tends to become unhappy. The person tends to maybe be sad or to start clenching and grinding. And there's a whole symptom that starts occurring because they're modifying what's called the autonomic nervous system. We have two systems in the body. One is called the sympathetic nervous system. And people like to call that the fight or flight. That's like when you see a tiger and you run light speed away, you're not gonna fight a tiger. Or you have a situation and you confront it and you lift some weight that you'd never be able to lift otherwise and that's the sympathetic system. Now, the other one is the parasympathetic system. And uh, these are called the autonomic systems. And these autonomic systems modulate throughout the body. Uh, and they cause different reactions depending on what the person is confronting in their daily life. And what you need to realize is that serotonin and dopamine are modulators that appear to affect bruxism. What do I mean by that? is that it seems like if you have adequate amount from your nutrition or from your habits, your daily habits, that you'll have enough serotonin and dopamine. Now, it's important to realize that because even vaping can start decreasing dopamine. Why? Because as you vape, you take nicotine, it stimulates dopamine receptors, but as it goes on with the drug cycle, then the body starts becoming weaker, it doesn't excrete dopamine anymore, it becomes dependent on the vaping nicotine. And lo and behold, now the person is addicted to nicotine and they don't have dopamine. So they don't really feel good. So they have to vape. But the more they vape, the more they get stressed out, affect their gums. And lo and behold, what they thought was helping them, now they're bruxing also. Only now they're also addicted to nicotine and the dopamine levels are low that naturally would have been high. Next one, please. Next slide, please. So let's take a look at some foods that can naturally increase your dopamine levels and affect your serotonin levels because they're related. Organic apples, and I would recommend organic to you because there's like toxicity. The body senses toxicity. When the body gets toxic, the body tends to react and get stressed. And the stress can lead to your bruxism. So if you have good nutrition, and it's organic nutrition without toxic chemicals, without toxic residues, then what happens is the body takes in these nutritious foods. You can even have some that are tasty. Organic dark chocolate, maybe 85%, 90%. And it's good for you. It's amazing, right? You can have some almonds with a chocolate. And uh, again, you can have banana, an apple, strawberries, uh, some really good proteins, obviously, eggs. Eggs are fantastic. They're also a dopamine superfood. Another one is salmon. Salmon is also excellent for you and is another superfood. You can have pumpkin seeds, beetroot, all of these foods, if you incorporate into your diet, it'd be interesting, do an experiment and see what happens. Let's go on to the next slide, please. And let's take a look at some more of these foods that will make you not only healthier, probably lose weight, but feel good. Increase your serotonin and dopamine. Avocados, spinach, green tea, most of the nuts that we look about. We talked about the eggs already. We talked about the salmon already. Then you have berries and you have the whole grains. So all of these foods lead to a happier existence it's also more nutritious. It's very interesting that the more nutrition you look at, the less stress you have, the less weight you gain, the happier you seem to be with your self-image and confidence. Next slide. 
What are some activities that you can indulge on? Well, obviously, if you're doing exercise, if you're having a healthy diet, what starts happening, you start feeling better about yourself. So you just naturally, you start taking less alcohol. You start doing less of uh, any kind of drug possibly that you were on. You have more of a chance of possibly getting off of that and stopping it on your own without any kind of artificial medication or treatment just by doing the exercise, the nutrition, sleeping well, engaging in healthy activities, maybe taking up singing. Maybe you want to go walking with your spouse. Maybe you want to be involved in your church, your synagogue, your mosque. Why? Because spiritual community activities, again, are stress releasing. It's very interesting. It's almost like nature and God made it. So the more we focused on natural or healthy or pro-survival activities that our inherent dopamine and serotonin in our bodies could work for us and we wouldn't be victims or fall prey to medications, to alcohols, to drugs, and live a healthier life, a, a more confident life. So let's go to the next slide. I encourage you to take vitamin B1. Really, all the B vitamins are excellent for stress. Vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is also excellent. Why B1 and D3? Because they affect serotonin, dopamine, and they're going to help you to feel happier. So if you have this along with these nutrition foods, now you're starting to feel better. Your body's healing itself. The body really has a tremendous capacity to heal. When you look at cutting yourself and how it heals itself, the body has tremendous capacity to heal. Obviously, the exercise. The exercise increases your circulation. The sweat detoxifies your body. And at the end, the body releases endorphins, which are another name for more happy hormones in the body that the body releases on its own. And these stress-releasing activities, the singing, the walking, the exercise, the socializing, all together with the nutrition, and visiting your dentist, having a night guard so you don't have a problem, and then maybe you don't practice anymore, and you put your night guard away and leave it there as a museum piece, as a relic of what used to happen when you weren't feeling so good, as a reminder to motivate you not to go back in time. Let's go to the next slide. And here, what I want to leave you with is our contact information. We would most happy to help you if you're bruxing, if you couldn't get all of what was happening on the show, you can visit us. We'll be more than happy to examine you. The first thing to do is the full examination. Too many people want to come into our office and they go, I came for this, I want this, please make me this. Realize the first step, as it is to everything, is to do a very thorough looking into, to follow up on things, to see what's really going on. Maybe you don't need the night guard. Maybe you do need a root canal and you're not bruxing your teeth and possibly will refer you to your dentist to have a root canal. Maybe you're having a problem because you have a cavity in a tooth or you may have a gum problem. It could be that your jaw is unstable because you've lost teeth and you need dental implants. But whatever it is, we do an examination. And once this examination is done, if you need the night guard, we will go into that, make it the way we showed you relieve your pain as we did with so many other people and anything else that's there we'll be more than happy to help you with. We work with your dentist and with your dentist, our office and following these tips on these videos, you can lead a much happier life, control any bruxism and maybe not have it to begin with. I hope this has helped you and we'll see you at the next episode of a time for truth show. Have a very good night. This show was sponsored by A Time for Truth Foundation Incorporated as a community service. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything is falling apart. Try to do your best, but only God knows that you 
Given everything you've got, the world takes you down. You just keep moving on at your feet.